Yo, we got the kids in here. We try to get out every single day. Hey, what we're doing today, those PKs. One of my favorites. It's just so much fun. Love getting in the zone with PKs. Um, you know, it's nice on technique. A lot of good things you gotta learn from PKs. But, I'd love to talk to you guys about some of the things that I learned through my experiences playing in a bunch of different countries. Europe, Brazil. Brazil especially, man, I learned so much there. That was one of the best places I have ever been to in terms of football. Footy there was just next level. It's just, I mean, I get asked this question all the time with like the national team, U.S. national team. Um, I was involved with the U.S. national team quite a bit through my career. Never got a call up in the senior team, but um, but was in the mix. I was in the mix, especially when I first went to Europe. But um, yeah, man, when I played in Brazil, hey, so. Hey, cutie. When I played in Brazil, they would always ask me too because, you know, the United States is so big. Brazil is massive as well, but the United States is so big. And they would, ask, they would always ask me, like, how come we weren't, like, developing as, 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 as well as, like, so many other countries thought we would with the talent that we have in the country. Like, how we, like, how pretty much like in other sports, how we're so good in them. Um... And I think we need to put some air in the ball. Um, and uh, pretty, when I was in Brazil, one thing that they mentioned was just no rhythm. No rhythm and flow. No rhythm and flow in what we do here and how we play. Uh, you know, even with our youth and everything. So... I mean, that made a lot of sense. That made a lot of sense. <clears throat> yeah, it feels like a... Like, right here, mentally, I don't feel like I'm getting old, but man, the body feels it, right? Dad, where should we put the cones? Hey, we can put the cones anywhere you like. I brought them out, so then you guys can have some fun. Put the cones up. Hey, but we're gonna hit PKs though. We're gonna hit some PKs. Hey, you took your shoes off? You wanna put them back on? You wanna keep them off? I usually like hitting barefoot. I usually like playing barefoot throughout the whole session. Or yeah, but yeah. I usually like playing barefoot. The whole time with the kids and everything it's just i mean you just you come in contact with the ground and you just feel a lot more a lot more with your with your your senses so like your sensory connection whatever it may be called you just feel the ground through your feet through your skin there's just a lot that happens through that it's just so good and you benefit so much for the to improve in the game but we can get more into that later as well. We'll get more into that later. But yeah, let's go have some fun, hit some PKs. There's I gotta go catch a little one too. She's already dribbling no way. Yeah, one thing that well I mean there's so many things. I mean there's there's a... Uh, well first and foremost, let's just hit a couple shots and then see what comes to mind. Hey, first thing we're doing is going to hit a couple shots, see what comes to mind. Um, definitely, you know, there are so many ways to hit a PK, so many ways to strike. Every single player is different. Everybody's got a different personality. Everybody's got a different uh, technique. Everybody's got something else. So what we'll do, though, is I'll hit a few shots, and then we'll kind of talk from there just on experiences from, like, players that I played with at the, the highest level, players that I played with through this, through that, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right. Ooh, you like that one, huh? <laughs> Score a goal. Hey, you got the pump? Ooh. 
so one of my favorite because I can aim outside of the post and then curl it a bit back in it is one of my favorite uh, PKs to hit either high low mid whatever it may be just based off of what I'm seeing from the keeper um, throughout the game and what their length is like etc but Now that one there, um, not bad. Um, it was mid. Mid can be a bit easy to save. Um, if it's mid height, it can be a bit easy to save. So I would either, uh, I mean, most goalkeepers at the high level um, are big and tall. So something high for them sometimes can be a bit easy because they're already standing up. So it can be a bit easy for them to uh, get. So. Yeah, that's why I got him for you, bud. I just had to get the kids some popsicles real quick. Usually, I'm playing with them this whole entire time. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, you know, if it's a bigger, like I was saying, if it was a bigger goalkeeper, um, definitely high can be a bit easy for them to get. So, I would necessarily, I would probably go lower. Like this one here, I'm going to try to go a little bit outside the post. And then, right now, it's, right now, I'm gonna go a little. I'm gonna go a little outside the post on this one, and right now because well, one, these balls you know have a lot of um, uh, a lot of grip, and then along with these shoes having a lot of grip as well. Uh, if you're playing, this is one thing you got to know, right? So if you're playing in Europe, um, especially England, it's very slippery, very wet, so you wouldn't necessarily aim that far out because it might not come back in time. But because it is we're in Cali right now, right? So because it is um, a bit warmer. A bit more grippy action and traction on the ball with the cleats and everything um, that you are able to turn the ball a bit more uh, maybe the air as well is able to bring the ball back a little bit more as well so uh, you can uh, you can sounds good so you can actually um, it sounds good bud hey so you can hit it a little farther out that way it can come back in, making it obviously a little harder for the keeper to get. And this is where we're going left side, right? So let me hit that one a little lower. All right, that was a little little in. But um, if you could probably see it on camera, you can probably see that. That was a little in, but on camera, I'm sure you can probably see that. it. Um, on camera, you can probably see that it... Probably went out a little bit and then came back in. Try that one one more time. So if you see there's a little speck on the ground, a little dirt speck, that's actually what I'm going to be pointing, that's what I'm going to be aiming, and then it should turn in a little bit. All right, now from this angle real quick, we're going to hit one opposite direction because I know the kids are on that side, but I'm not going to hit them because... Um, my confidence in my aim is just is, is, is on point, right? So it's just years of practice. But on these ones, these ones are definitely easier to trick a goalkeeper. That you're going, um, you're going far out, but then you're going to curl it back in, or you're going to go to our left and um, switch it up to go to the right. A lot of goalkeepers actually will pick this decision uh, most of the time for some reason. Not exactly sure why, but they'll pick this decision that you're gonna go uh to your right to our right but um so sometimes it's a bit that's why it's one of my favorite um directions to go to the left because it makes it a little easier but we're gonna go to the right on this one see if we can um uh get the keeper to go to his right and then not go to his left and we'll hit on this other side yeah bud that was nice and low. I would I would give that a high probability going in. Um, one thing that you you're seeing though that I want to mention is um yeah I'm not missing right. It, it's more so um no matter what, make sure it's on target because you're not exactly sure what the keeper's gonna do. So if you go too far out and then you hit it wide, there's no chance at all, right? So just make sure it's on target. That's one thing I remember at, at St. Mary's when I played the man. They would always tell me keep it on target, keep it on target, keep it on target. That way, it at least has a 100% chance 
if 10 of them are on target, it has a 100% chance that it's going to go in, right? So we'll go. You know, that one's nice and low, rolly. Like I said, in a game, I'd probably hit maybe a couple levels up harder. Let me see if I can hit one on the left side here. Just to show you a little bit of the speed, probably hit more like more like that speed, but probably with the inside of the foot, All right? Um, to give it a good shot. Like I said, hey, sometimes just we'll do one more from here. Sometimes it's because uh, you know at the end of the day, like for example, when I played in Brazil, what you're learning. But see, the main thing, the main thing is like at the end of the day, when you're playing in Brazil, when I, at the end of the day though, you're going to be picking and choosing where, um, you, you're probably going to be reading the goalkeeper, right? Um, you know, that's one of the best, one of the biggest skills you can have. Um, you know, I know Ronaldo, he, Cristiano, I know he'll, um, he does both based off of some trainers that I've had with Nike and everything that trained him as well. There were multiple times that I actually trained um alongside him and other players as well at a nike but um but yeah he would kind of go both sometimes he just picked the spot and then would go there and sometimes he would um read where the keeper was going or not right just based off his gut feeling see what it was like but for example this one here sometimes you just uh go down the middle right or sometimes you just figure out where the goalkeeper's gonna go based off of uh their footwork so as i'm approaching the ball you can kind of time, you can definitely time, you can do this with dribbling as well, which I'll get in later, but you can time where the goalkeeper may go, and if they're off the ground, you can time a little bit if they're going to be um, actually grounded or not, because if they're not grounded and you hit the ball, then they have zero chance of getting it, right? So that timing sometimes can be, so sometimes, you know, you can chip it and go in the middle, and because they just were not balanced or, or not ready for it, then they're going to pick on the side, and you're going straight in the middle. All right, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a different view here just so you kind of see what I'm talking about when you're aiming out, especially because we're in Cali here and it's a bit warmer, so you're able to get a bit more grip on the ball and everything and bring it back in. But if you're in England or in a different country that maybe is a bit slippier, more wet, more damp, um, it's going to be hard to do. So in that case, if I was if I was hitting a PK in England right now or somewhere in Europe that I've played and it's, you know, it's a little wet, whatever it may be, I would line up a bit straighter and then hit more of a more of a straight shot that wasn't you know exactly where I wanted it to go but it would be a bit straighter shot and as you can see with that shot there because my technique right now is used to the climate that's why it went, went more inside right because because it's used to hitting it out wide. So you gotta make that adjusted mentally and physically a bit. But because we're in Cali, it's a bit warmer. I am gonna aim more out there. There's like a there's a uh, there's a leaf out there actually. Probably gonna aim towards that. But it should cur should curl back in because it is warm. I'm able to get a bit more grip on the ball, right? There we go. Although that one. Although that did hit, that did hit um, in the back of the net, not in the side of the net, the back of the net, is still, by the time it gets to the post, by the time it gets to the, the left post, it's it's out, but because it's curling, it's gonna be curling around the goalkeeper, like this. See that? So although that shot was, um, it looks like it's, it's it's going a bit in towards the keeper. It's, it's starting out pretty wide to where the keeper in, in most situations won't get it. But you can start out wider if you want and curl it more, you know. But these are, you know, these are some safe PKs. Um, I mean, if I'm in the zone, I'm definitely gonna be hitting side of the net. But like I said, in most situations, I'm going left. Um, if I get a gut feeling that the keeper is reading that, 
then I'll probably change it up. But that's, I mean, when I was growing up, I mean, you know, I can't even remember when I first started training. So that's how far back it goes. But hey, anybody can go pro though, all right? If you, if you can see it and you can dream it and you can feel it here in your gut, um, you can do it. Um, this goes for anything in life, but specifically for soccer, because that's what I know the most. Um, just nobody ever thought I was going to make it. Um, people didn't even think I was going to go to college. People didn't even think I was going to graduate, right? There's so many different things. I was born to, to play soccer. That's what I was. That's what I am. And um, that's what I was born to be, right? So there was, there was no, you know, plan B. There was, there was none of that. Um, it was just Carlos, the professional soccer player, right, who's about to become a professional soccer player when that time came. But yeah, so like I was getting back to the PK, sorry going on a rant a little bit. Getting back to the PK, I am gonna aim out. There's a little leaf on the ground you can see there. This one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you can see on the on the on the ball, see there's like the orange from the, the dials or the, 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 the panels. See there's like a little bit of orange on the left hand side. I'm gonna hit it there, but kind of give it more of an upturn. That way the ball can go up and down a little bit and then maybe stick down low. Yeah. Camera. All right, so that one didn't go exactly where I wanted because I did curl it more. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again, same shot, and same same spot, but I'm gonna aim a little farther left. Oh, you got a picture, buddy? Hey, I love it. Hey, all right, you wanna take some pictures? Perfect. Here, ready? Yeah. So I'm gonna aim this one a little farther left in the leaf. So it should be more on the post. There we go. Yeah. Hey, I love you, bud. Hey, thanks for the shots, bud. You got some good, good picks. All right, let's see if we can get a little different angle here. Um, Yeah, I mean, I played with some of the craziest players, right? So, um, and against some of the dopest players too. So, um, players y'all have looked up to. And um, I was always, you know, one thing I would definitely tell every young player to do is, is um, learn from everybody. And then just uh, pick and choose what works for you, you know, what you want to grab from it. Because not everything works for everybody, but at least if you listen to everybody and observe and become that student at all times and uh, understand that you know every player is different and you can learn something from everybody um that's that's gonna make your your take your game to the next level right but um hey we're here for pks though so let me hit a couple more um definitely naturally figure out what your how many steps you're gonna be taking back um based off of your anatomy how wide you're gonna be if you're gonna be straight on um, even just to go with some of the, like uh, w one player, that, one of my favorite players of all time, Ronaldinho. Um, I mean, I used to mimic his 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 approach to the ball um, for years. Like when I was in college and everything, I used to mimic that. So, right, he would come back. All right, he would kind of pick and choose where he was at. Had his right foot forward. Um, or maybe, maybe he didn't do something. Maybe I'm just uh, making this up, but I'm pretty sure this is what he did. And then he would kind of walk over to the side, and he usually would go over to the crossover. Um, I wouldn't do that. I would go left side and go wide, go wide, and then try to get close to that post. But um, but that approach, though, I thought that approach was just massive because it started off slow, and then gradually kind of sped up a bit. And I feel like for a keeper, that was a bit hard for them to. Um, uh, it's a bit hard for them to uh, to manage, right? For them to block. Um, but hey, you know, I had my own style as well. So I always, always, sometimes I would look at the opposite place of where I was going to hit it. So if I wanted to go left or right, if I wanted to go left, I would look right. That way the keeper thought I was going to be going right. But that wasn't the case, right? Because I was going left. So, but, but. In this case, I'm telling you that, but that's sometimes I'll do that just to keep her out. When I was younger, I would do that. But then, you know, as I got older, 
more confident, more experience, um, played in different countries that just, uh, I learned a lot from some of like, uh, um, like in Hungary, one of the top players that ever played for Hungary, played for Barcelona and everything. Uh, one of the things that he told me is he always, he, he went nice and slow and he just always read the keeper because the keepers got antsy in his experience, keepers got antsy. So they always just moved before he finally made a decision. And then, you know, um, he took his time as much as possible. He knew the, the, the ref wasn't necessarily going to uh, call it back or anything like that and let him take his time, especially being the captain and being the, one of the top players in, in Hungary. So, well, he played for Barca, which is massive. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's one thing that he always taught me, that he taught me that I asked him about uh, was kind of how he approached the, the PK. So, you know, if you want to do that and wait for the keeper, you want to wait for the keeper to move, then you can definitely do that. So, and what that might look like in terms of speed, because you might only hit that like a 50% or 60%, the actual ball strike, uh, maybe even less, right? Um, but you're waiting for that keeper to move. So, you know, you're looking at the ball, maybe if, uh, where specifically you're, you, you might want to hit it, potentially, but more so you're looking at the ball and looking at the keeper at the same time, right? Or you can look at the keeper as well, kind of see, but you're probably looking at the ball and looking at the keeper at the same time. And then... Boom, just nice and easy into the side. Especially when they're going slow, for some reason, a lot of the keepers will uh, will freeze a little bit. I hope I hope a lot of you learn from this. Um, you know, I know every everybody's experiences are um, different. Everybody's gonna go through a different journey, especially through your football career or whatever career you have. But um, yeah, if as long as you can take something from what I said today. Um, it'll make a world of a difference. I already know. I believe in all of you. Um, like I was saying, nobody thought I would make it, but I did. Um, man, I really worked my butt off for that. I'll get it more into it later. If there's, hey, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, please let me know. Let me know in the comments. Send me messages, whatever, on my Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere. Hey. Yeah, you guys can write me anywhere. And I would love to do more videos on whatever you guys have questions on. Um, you guys can ask me anything. And, um, hey, please like, subscribe, comment, everything. That we can, you know, support the channel and get some more cool videos. And maybe I can start doing some collaborations with some others as well. With some pros, we can learn from them. Um, that would be pretty cool. But, yeah, hey, let's end it off with, the, with another strike here. Of course, I'm going to go left, right? So... Let's see. Oh! Hit the post twice. I was trying to do a little much, right? Just trying to get it in there nice and tight. This time we'll be a little safer. Make sure we get it in. There we go.